Whether it's powering a factory conveyor, running your home's washing machine, or even helping an electric vehicle drive forward, a one humble invention is silently at work, the induction motor. But how does it work? And why is it still one of the most widely used motors in the world today? Let's find out. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button, it really helps us out. Uh, today we're diving into one of the most important yet overlooked pieces of technology, the induction motor. It's reliable, efficient, and powers more machines than you might think. We'll explore how it works, break down its components, and then look at why it remains the go-to motor for countless applications. An induction motor, often called an asynchronous motor, is an AC motor where the electricity that powers the rotor isn't supplied directly. Instead, it's induced, hence the name. This clever mechanism means the motor can run without brushes or commutators, making it durable and low maintenance. It may look simple from the outside, but inside there's some fascinating physics at play. Let's open one up and see what's really going on. Inside, you'll find two main parts, the stator and the rotor. The stator is the stationary outer shell. It contains copper windings arranged in a specific pattern and connected to an AC power supply. When current flows through these windings, it generates a rotating magnetic field. Now the rotor, which sits inside the stator, usually looks like a cylindrical cage. That's why we call it a squirrel cage rotor. It's made of conductive bars shorted at both ends by rings. No power is directly fed into the rotor. Instead, that rotating magnetic field from the stator cuts across the rotor bars and induces a current inside them. This induced current creates its own magnetic field, which interacts with the stator's field. And that's what causes the rotor to spin. All of this happens without any physical electrical connection to the rotor. Why it's called asynchronous? Now, here's the interesting part. The rotor doesn't spin at the exact same speed as the stator's magnetic field. It's always just a little behind. That the difference in speed is called slip and it's essential. Without slip, and no current would be induced in the rotor, so no motion would occur. That's why we call it an asynchronous motor. When AC current flows into the stator coils, it creates a magnetic field that rotates at a speed determined by the frequency of the power supply and the number of poles in the stator. As the magnetic field sweeps across the rotor, it induces currents that cause the rotor to begin rotating. It tries to catch up, but it never quite does. The continuous chase keeps the motor running smoothly. There are two main types of induction motors, single phase and three phase. Single phase motors are common in homes, in things like ceiling fans, air conditioners and washing machines. Three phase motors, on the other hand, are the backbone of industrial machinery. Even electric vehicles like the original Tesla Model S used a three-phase AC induction motor thanks to its high torque and rug design. So why is the induction motor still so widely used? It's simple, it has no brushes, so it needs very little maintenance. It's cost-effective, durable, and operates efficiently under a wide range of loads. And because of its simplicity, it's also extremely reliable. Compared to other motor types, it might lack precision in some cases, but when it comes to powering pumps, fans, and conveyors, it's hard to beat. The induction motor might not get as much attention as more modern designs, but it's been powering our world for over a century, and it's still going strong. Whether it's at the heart of a household appliance or driving heavy machinery in a factory, this motor proves that sometimes the simplest ideas are the most powerful. If you learned something new today, give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into the technology that drives our world. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.